That right there is why you don't use coil spring spacers. They end up laying in the middle of the road. All right, so today we're gonna do something I've been wanting to get to for a little while. Uh, we're gonna do the next step on our AC delete here on the S10. Uh, we're going to put that Dodge truck on hold for a little bit. I got some more footage of some uh, fixes we've done on that thing, but I'll get that out in the next video probably. And as a little teaser, uh, I got a new project coming in, and uh, I'm going to give you a hint as to what it might be right here. All right, so yeah, we do have a new project coming. I'll put a video out on that for you guys, but uh, in this one, we're just going to focus on this S10. So uh, let's get to work on this thing. All right, so once again, I apologize for the fan, but as you can see here, it is 95 degrees at 60% humidity here in the garage, so uh, I'm sweating like a whore in church. All right, so this duct tape was never meant to be a permanent solution. It's just I wanted to seal up the holes for when I'm driving it around and keep the dirt and debris out of the inside of the cab, uh, getting underneath the carpet on the firewall and things like that. So uh, we will be addressing that soon, but that's not what we're doing today. Today... I'm going to remove the last component, which is this air conditioning unit here. Now, a lot of people may not realize this, but they make an AC delete component. Because if you just put a shorter belt on here and reroute your belt, it's really easy to spin the water pump in the wrong direction. And then your car is going to, or truck, I should say, is going to constantly overheat. So here's what we did. Here's what we picked up. It's this guy here. Which is nothing more than an aluminum bracket with a pulley on it. But uh, I got this for 25 bucks plus shipping. They usually go for about 30 to 35 plus shipping, but uh, the price dropped for some reason. I happened to catch it, so I grabbed it. Um, and what that allows us to do is take that compressor off, so it's not just spinning there doing nothing, and uh, get that big heavy thing out of there, but still be able to turn our belt properly. So that's all we're going to do today. It's not that big a deal, but uh, let's get to it. All right, so basically what we got here is a couple 14 millimeter bolts, and I believe it's just those two bolts that take this thing off. I did not, uh, did not come with the directions, but we never read them anyway. We'll tidy this up with a zip tie afterwards. But for now, let's go ahead and get this unbolted. I gotta get this, uh, gotta get the tension off of this here uh, belt first. I forgot about that. Give me one second to get the tools. Okay, so I'm not doing this probably the right way, but I'm doing it the way I do it, and it's fast. So I'm just going to put that pry bar in there. I'm going to make sure it's far enough that it doesn't slip. Whoop, slipping anyway. Ah. See, sometimes I don't look so pro. So there we go. We'll take that, not get our fingers in there, and we'll just flip that right off of there. There we go. All right, I'm sure there's an easier way. All right, so now we got that belt out of the way. Let's go ahead and get these bolts loosened up. We'll take the backing nut off first. There's one. Come over this side, do the same thing. Oh, this isn't a fashion statement, I just, I keep my, I brought a new project home and this is the rubber bands I keep on the straps, I just put them there so I don't lose them, and I forgot about it, so I know it looks silly, but there it is, alright, now let's get these other bolts out, I'm thinking they should just slide right out, yep, there we go, that one's hitting on the pulley. Hopefully I don't have to take that pulley off to get that bolt out. Let's see about this one. Looks like it's going to do the same exact thing. Come on. There you go. There, now I look like a moron, right? But hey, we're honest. I 
I could go get a hammer and knock that through. Looks like I'm gonna have to. Alright. This looks like one of those situations where there probably should be some instructions and I should probably read them. That one might be Freddy because it's not popping loose. Let's uh, keep turning this and see if it goes away. Alright, looks like there's something here that catches it. So it appears to me this has to be turned a specific way. There's a flat spot on the bolt here. There we go. Yeah, that is the case. And then, oh, that's how it works. All right. So there's a flat spot on this washer head, the bolt head here on the washer part, um, and that's how it comes past the pulley. And there's also, I'll show you after I get it apart. There's also a little thing there. It looks like it was catching on on the bracket itself. So, let me turn this one. See if that slides by now. It does. Find it. <laughs> Man, it's been on there for a few years. And there's one more bolt at the bottom. All right. It's kind of a golden rule. One of those things you learn when you're younger after you break a few things is that if it's not coming off easy there's probably something still holding it so don't just start prying on it like the like crow magnet man or something so there's three bolts that hold this thing on only two of them are going to go back in i believe but we'll see That one I can't hit with a hammer, but I can probably pry against the back cover a little bit. Or the cylinder head, I should say. Okay. Same thing on this one, it's got a flat spot as well. As I find it. All right, let's see. I take a little weight off it. There we go. I'll pry against this a little bit. I take a little weight off and get that one. Now we got the bottom one here. Bottom one's a little sticky. There we go. It just takes a little wiggling back and forth. There we go. Just took a little jiggling and that gets our three bolts out. Now, I'm wishing I was wearing gloves, but that should be it. We should be able to just pull this thing out of here now. So let's find out.
There we go. That's it. It is out. I'm gonna go wash my hands, I'll be right back. All right, so uh, that's what we're dealing with. Now we've got that stupid, filthy compressor out of there. Uh, now we can put in our new air conditioning delete doohickey. Which is basically just gonna fit here like this. And where those bolts were, and that's gonna hold our, new, our pulley. So let's get that on there. Well, from what I can see on this thing, there's no right side up or up, right side down or any of that, so I'm going to put it to where you don't see the china and put that on the bottom, like that. That puts the part number up here on the top as well. So we'll do that. Get one of our bolts and stick it in there. There we go. Another one out there. That's basically all there is to it. So we'll leave that there just to hold it. There we go. Here's a little sliding bushing in here that holds it tight. I'll show you that in a second. There we go. Make sure this one stays tight. All right, that is it. Now we just put our belt back on and we are good to go. Now let's do this dumb move again. Yeah, I stab myself with this thing, I know I am. I'm serious when I say don't get your fingers in here. And of course it wants to twist and move all over the place, so... There we go. Ah, uh, looks like we're good. Alright, let's check that belt. I'll let you guys help me. Alright, the belt is on at the bottom, it's on at the water pump, it's on at the power steering and the alternator, and now our new pulley right here. Alright, so let's get this stuff off here and start it up. Make sure it works right. No squeaks, no rattles, I think we're good to go. Alright, so the last thing we need to do to button this up is tie up this uh, lead for the compressor. I'm basically just going to run it against this wiring harness right here. It's going across the front of the motor and I'm just going to zip tie all that together to keep it from moving. There we go. Slip that up. Good to go. All right, so that was it. That was a quick little video, like I said. Um, we'll go ahead and get some more stuff out more often. It's only been about five days since the last video. I've been putting them out every six or seven, or well, maybe seven or eight. But uh, anyway, uh, good to be back on the S10. I love this little truck. Uh, but we do have a new project coming in, which means that there's an uncertain future for the S10. Uh, the S10 isn't really done. I wouldn't consider it done. It needs a few things. I need to deal with that uh, hole in the firewall, which is part of finishing up the AC delete. Um, what else do I need to do on this thing? I need to get the uh, control arm bushings changed out and get the front end finally aligned uh, so that I can be done with that. And there's a few little things I'd like to do to it. Uh, the it's a, almost 100 degrees. It is 100 degrees here in the garage. It's about 95 outside, but uh, I just got thunder and lightning. 
So, and the sky's black over there and blue and cloudy over there. So I think we're about to get a thunderstorm. But either way, we're good here in the garage. Um, so back to what I was saying, the S10 isn't really what I would consider finished. Um, I still, I don't know, that linseed oil does the trick kind of, but the truck stays a little tacky and it's just not a permanent solution. Um, but then again, without removing all the rust and doing body work and just, you know, destroying the character of the truck, there's really no way to clear coat it because uh, that's not a permanent solution either. You can clear coat a truck with rust and patina and dents and all that, but the reality of it is that clear coat is going to start to peel again just like the factory stuff did. Uh, so it's not really a good solution. And plus, I still have some factory clear coat on there that hasn't peeled off yet. And if I try to clear over that, it's going to continue peeling. So it's just a poor quality clear coat. So putting another layer of clear on it's not really going to keep it from continuing to peel. So I'll just have new clear coat over peeling clear coat. So uh, you see a lot of guys clear coating their patina trucks. It's just not a long-term solution. That stuff will come back off in two to four years, depending on how much you're exposing it to UV rays and sunlight. Uh, so I'm not sure what to do there. I'm not sure if we're going to keep this truck because I do have a new project coming. And um, we're going to need to finance that project. And I'm not really in a situation here where I have room to store more than one vehicle here in the garage. I can only have one in here at a time, basically, uh, until I get a shed built and get the lawnmower out of here and a few other things. Then I might have room for two cars in here. But uh, right now, really only have room to work on one because you need space to work on a car, not just a place to put it. Um, so until I can do something about that, the S10 would have to sit outside while we're working on a new project. So I got a lot of things to consider. Not sure what the future is for the S10. Uh, what else? I guess that gets us pretty well caught up. So uh, I just want to say thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. That does help me a lot. And I uh, appreciate you guys helping me grow this channel. Uh, and hopefully uh, I continue to do a half-assed job like I have been. <laughs> Alright, thanks a bunch. We'll talk to you later.